Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Madam Secretary, for thank you both for your friendship and your leadership. And I want to thank everyone that is uh, on the call today. Um, folks, uh, as the secretary mentioned at the beginning of this call, we got word of the president's decision. And I'm sure we will hear more from him this week. Um, and I just want to say this on a personal level. I am uh, emotional about the president's decision because this president, Joe Biden, has been a transformational president. He's been a great leader. He's a good man, a decent man, who has done so much for this nation, but so much to see us as people, to value us, to fight for us. I think about the transformational things we have seen uh, over the course of these past three and a half years from the investment into our climate, uh, fighting against the climate crisis, helping those burdened by student loans, bringing down the cost of prescription drugs. It has been transformational as it relates to what he has done and what he has accomplished. And, um, you know, I'm emotional because I am still, still riding with Biden. I still support my president. And we will get through this, my friends, as we always do. So I just wanted to put that on record, that I love Joe Biden. Uh, and I'm so appreciative of his leadership over these years. You know, I'm honored to speak with all of you. The Credentials Committee plays a critical role in our party and our convention. I want to thank you for your leadership in guiding this process. Again, I want to say thank you to Jim Roosevelt and Marsha Fudge. On behalf of myself and the co-chairs, I want to thank all of the credential members who have been elected in every state and territory and the at-large PLEO members for being with us today. We also want to acknowledge everyone who is online watching the live stream of our meeting. One of my great honors as chair of the DNC is working with all 57 states and territorial Democratic parties to ensure that Democrats everywhere have the resources they need to win elections. Across this nation, I see the hard work, the dedication and commitment you all have to our party and to our country. I see it every day on the ground. I saw it in the members of the Rules and Bylaws Committee, and now I see it in the Credentials Committee. You have worked tirelessly to ensure the seating, that the seating of delegates and alternates is done in accordance with our rules. And you've committed to ensuring that our delegates represent the diversity of our country. Our committee is representative of every American who wants to be heard and, and, and be a part of this process. Those are the values our party speaks of, and those are the values our party stands for. So thank you again to all of our delegates, uh, and thanks to each and every one of you. Our delegates depict the diversity and the inclusivity of our party and our state delegates represent the people in their communities. So thanks to you all. We will execute the most successful convention in our party's lifetime. And thanks to you, we will nominate a Democratic president and we will defeat Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. So thank you all again for all that you do. You're on this committee because you are Democrats who believe in our democracy and country. You believe in the electoral process and every voter having a voice in who represents them. So today, that's what we are going to do is to fight for those values and to make sure that we seat our delegates. We're all in this together, my friends, and I'm so glad that you are here today. So with that, I will turn it back over to my dear friend, Secretary Marsha Fudge. Thank you so much, Chair Harrison. Credentials Committee members, your participation today is truly admirable and appreciated because you play no small part in electing our nominee and protecting our democracy from MAGA extremism. While Trump and extreme Republicans aim to tear down the diversity and freedoms that make our country the envy of the world, Democrats are celebrating our differences and championing our individual strengths. Our convention and the work we do on this committee reflect those important values. And critically, those values are best represented in our candidate, President Biden, 
to this point has spent his years in public service, fighting for vulnerable Americans, expanding freedoms, and building an economy that works for everyone. And I know that our new nominee will stand for the same things. We are a stronger America because of the work that he has done. We need to finish the job as Democrats. And I think it is very, very important. And I am truly honored to co-chair such an important process. I thank you and I will pass it back to Jim. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, and I wanna thank you all for being with us today. I wanna echo the comments made by Chair Harrison and Secretary Fudge. The credentials, the convention credentials committee is a critical key to making our convention a success. And our job, all of us, is incredibly important. As you vote on delegates today, you, you're helping us take one more step toward nominating the strongest possible candidate for president and candidate for, president, uh, for vice president of the United States. They will be champions for democracy, freedom, and the American people. And in August, those are the values our convention will uplift. While Trump and the RNC spent four days spreading fear and hatred, maybe about 15 minutes spreading unity and the rest of four days spreading fear and hatred, the DNC represents the diversity and love of our country. Our delegate selection process is designated, is designed rather, to ensure every voice and vision is heard and our state and territory delegations accurately represent their respective electorates. And today we see that that is more important than ever. That's why we designed it this way. As a party, our strength is in our diversity. And I'm so proud to see the incredible people here today as active participants in democracy. While extreme mega Republicans run with Project 2025's agenda to tear down the systems and the progress that we hold so dear, you are fighting to protect our country's future. Thank you again, and now I'm gonna pack, pass it back to Marsha. Thanks, Jim. As we get underway today, uh, we must first establish that we have a quorum of the Credentials Committee members present for today's meeting. To register your attendance, please open the Credentials Committee meeting homepage on your browser and mark yes on the screen. Members, you will need to have two windows open in your browser or the homepage open on a second device during the, this meeting to participate in this Zoom meeting and to vote on committee business. If you have any trouble, please send a chat to member support. Again, please keep both browser windows open during our meeting. A quorum is constituted by a majority of the total votes present, which is 91.75 votes. Staff, if you will confirm for us that we have a quorum. I have been informed we have a quorum present. With that, I will now ask the DNC's parliamentarian, Helen McFadden, to review the committee's rules of procedure that will govern today's meeting. You received a copy of these rules via email, and they are also available on the Credentials Committee homepage. I would note that the proposed rules of procedure supplement the rules of procedure prescribed in Appendix A of the call 
and include language to ensure our meeting is conducted in a way that lives up to the highest standards of accessibility and inclusion. Helen, please give us an overview. Thank you, Madam Secretary. These rules were sent out yesterday with the agenda and the draft resolutions for this meeting. The rules are essentially those that have been used for many years as the secretary said, they are in compliance with the call and in compliance with the call as amended. They've been slightly modified for the context of a virtual meeting. So I would call your attention to several things. All of the votes taken during this meeting will be on the electronic platform. As the chair has already asked you to open that up in order to show that you are present for purposes of a quorum, you should still have that open. It will be your means to vote. Please keep it open. These rules, if you adopt them, limit debate to 20 minutes on a main motion and 10 minutes in addition if there is any amendment to the main motion or subsidiary motion. Minority reports, if applicable, are fully described in rule 13. And finally, there is a rule in this uh, set of rules indicating that recognition will be given to persons identified from the Biden campaign who will be the recognized speakers. Every, everything else is at the discretion of the chair. Um, with that, Madam Secretary, I believe that is a quick summary of the rules. Thank you very much, Helen. The chair will now uh, recognize Everett Brown for the purpose of making a motion to approve the committee's rules of procedure. Good morning. I move to approve the rules of procedure. Thank you. The chair now recognizes Susan Valdez, who wants to second the motion. So moved. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I'll ask the chair to advise if a member has raised their hand. Seeing, Seeing no none. further dis oh, okay. Chair, seeing none. Seeing none. No further discussion. We will now vote on the motion to adopt the rules of procedure. Please cast your vote on the Credentials Committee meeting homepage. Again, if you're having trouble voting, please send a chat to member support. What's the output? The motion passes. The motion passes. Jim, I'll load, now turn it back to you. B of the Rules and Bylaws Committee's report to the Credentials Committee. This report provides an overview of the RBC's work regarding the 2024 delegate selection process. You may notice that I am one of the co-chairs alongside my fantastic colleague and the wonderful DNC convention chair, Minyan Moore. Minyan and I began working on the nominating process for this cycle right after the last election. And I'm so grateful to her for her friendship and her contributions to our party and our country. Under the delegate selection rules for the 2024 convention and the call for the 2024 convention, as adopted by the Democratic National Committee, 
in September of 2022, the DNC's Rules and Bylaws Committee, which you'll hear me refer to as the RBC, was given the authority to administer the 2024 delegate selection process. For the last two years, the RBC has worked closely with all of the state and territorial Democratic parties, the presidential campaigns, and others to oversee the implementation of the process for, for selecting all official convention participants. Part of the oversee of the RBC's oversight responsibility is jurisdiction over challenges to the seating of delegates and alternates, which pursuant to the rules transferred to the Credentials Committee on June 24, 2024, the 56th day before the convention. So that authority is now in this committee. There was a challenge to the implementation of the Mississippi Delegate Selection Plan filed on June 24, 2024. After reviewing the challenge, it was determined that the challenge was not properly filed in accordance with either the rules of procedures, uh, rules of procedure of the Rules and Bylaws Committee or the Credentials Committee, and therefore that no further action could be taken on it. Throughout the 2024 delegate selection process, the RBC has worked to ensure an open, fair, and honest nominating process for all who wish to participate as Democrats. In this spirit, the committee has endeavored to provide each state party with flexibility while following the rules set forth in the 2024 delegate selection plan and delegate, and delegate selection rules, 2024 delegate selection rules in the administration of the delegate selection procedures. The committee's overall objective is to have a small D democratic process that expands participation for voters across the country. As our capital D democratic party works diligently to do at all times. To that end, we are proud to say that the 2024 Democratic National Convention will be the most inclusive in history and reflect the Democratic Party that truly represents the diversity and strengths of our party and our country. Marsha. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, for that overview of the rules and bylaws committee's work and this committee's role in the process. I'm pleased to report that we have no challenges to hear or resolve pertaining to the seating of delegates and alternates to, to the 2024 Democratic National Convention. Therefore, for today's meeting, we have two proposed resolutions. One provides for the seating of the delegates and the alternates from each state and territory. The other resolution delegates administrative enforcement authority to the co-chairs to finalize this committee's work. These are both available on your secure voting homepage. Our rules provide for a committee co-chair to recognize a member to introduce each proposed resolution. After the resolution is introduced, we will recognize any additional speakers that have been pre-designated by the campaigns as provided in our committee's rules of procedure. After discussion, we will move to a vote. During this time, the speakers and time for debate on the resolution has been pre-designated by the campaign. Jim and I will call on the speakers who have been pre-designated by the campaign on each of the resolutions. This process is provided in our rules will ensure our virtual meeting will run smoothly. Resolution one, the chair recognizes Stacey Abrams for the purpose of making a motion to adopt the resolution on the seating of delegates and alternates to the 2024 Democratic National Convention from unchallenged states and territories. Ms. Abrams. You're muted. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Budge. I therefore move to adopt this resolution. Thank you. Uh, the chair recognizes Nadi Green to second the motion. So moved. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I will ask the staff to advise the chair if a member has raised their hand. Chair, seeing none. Thank you. Seeing no discussion, we will now vote on the motion to adopt the resolution on the seating of delegates and alternates 
to the 2024 Democratic National Convention from unchallenged states and territories. Please cast your vote on the Credentials Committee meeting homepage. Again, if you're having trouble voting, please send a check to member support. Motion carries. I would, the chair recognizes Representative Anna Ramos for the purpose of making a motion to adopt the resolution delegating enforcement authority to the chairs of the credentials committee. Representative Ramos. Thank you. I move to adopt this resolution. Thank you. The chair recognizes Angela Zong to second the motion. The Zong. So moved. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. It is, is there any discussion? Chair, seeing none. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, we will now vote on the motion to adopt the resolution delegating enforcement authority to the chairs of the Credentials Committee. Please cast your vote on the Credentials Committee meeting homepage. Credentials committee members, we have taken action on all of the business before us today. The chair recognizes Senator Maddie Hunter for the purpose of making a motion to approve the report of this committee and authorize staff to make corrections as needed. Senator Hunter. I move to adopt the report. Thank you. The chair recognizes Diara Ballinger who wants to second the motion. So moved. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Again, I will ask the staff to advise the chair if a member has raised their hand. Chair, seeing none. Seeing no further discussion, we will now vote on the motion to approve the report of this committee and authorize staff to make corrections as needed. Please cast your vote on the Credentials Committee meeting homepage. Thank you all. Jim, is Jim, are you with us? If not, Jim and I are proud of the work. Go ahead, Jim. So thank you, Secretary Fudge, uh, for uh, getting the essential work of this committee done. And I want to acknowledge that the vote uh, on the Credentials Committee uh, report uh, has passed. I want to thank everyone again for their participation in this meeting. I also want to thank once again our uh, Credentials Committee staff and the Secretary's Office for making this all 
function in, interest, in the interest of our democracy. We appreciate everyone's input on these important issues for the committee to consider. I have no doubt that our party is going to work tirelessly to elect a president who represents everybody in this country and a vice president to support that president. We also are going to work tirelessly to elect Democrats all across this country. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in Chicago. Thank you so much. Jim and I are proud of the work we've accomplished. I want to thank you all, uh, all of the members and staff who have been working so diligently on this meeting and to make to ensure that this was a smooth and seamless process. The strength of our party is in its diversity, and there was more that unites us than divides us. We all understand how vital this year's election is to our nation and our future. And I believe that we will win because we are the party that is on the right side of history. We are the party that believes in humanity and civility, in the rule of law, in the Constitution. I am proud to be a Democrat, and I am proud to have worked with this president, and I'm going to be even more proud to work with our next one. Members, we have concluded the business scheduled for our meeting today. Thank you again for joining us today. Have a wonderful evening, and we will see you at the convention and on the campaign trail. This meeting is now adjourned.